I, I, I'm gonna, I was not. I'm gonna, uh, let I'm gonna them, share with John. Yeah, I'll share with John. Okay. And, uh, you gotta wait a minute, I gotta pull this thing up yeah. here. So, for those of you who weren't here before, this is our third workshop meeting, right? Mm -hmm. And all we've been doing is going through, we've been using as a, we kind of have a, a budget base that's based on last year, and we've been going through and just line by line asking questions, looking at what it is. And I, with my fellows here, you guys were at the last session. How would you, I mean, people who would like to testify? Well, to us for, yeah, there's listers, planning, DRB, and town office, right? Mm -hmm. who's this, who's so this? so okay. who's planning to talk? All of them. Raise your hand if you're going to talk. We're one, two, to or one, two, three. Okay. I, should we do that at first? Should we just have people? What do you guys want to do? Yeah, let's do. We can do. Um, Rather than just make them sit through whatever right. we we're going to do line by line, I think we should have them come up and yeah. one at a time and talk. Well, and, I, and the listers and the people <coughs> sent us an email um, with the number, so maybe Jan could go first because she's both. Yeah, Jan, why don't you come up? Get in the hot seat. This is is it listing here? And it goes this way. <laughs> this way, it's planning. Okay. okay. <laughs> I like it, Jan. All right. All right. Where do you want to start? Um, let's do Lister. Yeah, she's okay. she's on a tilt, so she must be listing. Yeah, are we tilting the right way? No, Lister? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no. Okay. Uh, I, I think my request in the email was fairly self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. I was here to know if you wanted any questions that were asking about it. I, um, I think Thanks, the discussion that we had uh, relative to wages, I, I, I upped it because I'm not sure the time between April and July of 2024 will be preparation for the reappraisal. Mm -hmm. And there might be extra listing time. Map revisions with Christine are about the same. Um, so yes. Remind, remind me when. Remind, I should know, but I've forgotten. We have that contract with Ed. It starts when, July 2024. It starts starts July 2024. Well, yeah. Yeah. But you're saying. But that's the reappraisal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Which is a separate. Line item, right? You're not put it in at all here. Hmm? We would. I wouldn't put it in here. No, because it was a separate. It's a it's separate contract. Right. Separate. But but you're thinking the the list is going to be have work to There's do probably time. right near the end of the fiscal year. Right. right. Yeah. And my assumption is that um, he's he wanted to start his work in April, and I think we put the date that um, he would use our grand list that's coming in in July. Now, it's going to be probably preparatory work. Right. Um, you know, it's my guess. I'm sorry, can you, when would Ed start doing the reappraisal? When? His contract is July 1. Of this coming uh, calendar 20, year. It'll be the 2024, 2024. fiscal year. Okay, so, so it would July, not be 2023. Right. But so July 1 of 23, he would start. Up to, no. Yes. No. He'll start in the 2020, when you tell me, when is he going to start? Just don't use fiscal year, just... Uh, fiscal calendar year, he's going to start July 1st, 2024. 2024, okay, good. So Thank in you. other words, it'd be the 2025. It would be the next fiscal It would be the 2025 right. fiscal right. year. The appraisal the crisis. crisis. Yeah, but so, with this, but he's going to, but in fact, you're saying he might start early. Well, he might ask the listers to yeah. do something yeah. mm -hmm. okay. in that period of time between April and July of 2024, yeah. which my understanding fits Where's into your, this fiscal year budget. Right. So, right. so his 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 invoices would not come out of the lister budget. It would come out of the reappraisal, which is not starting until July 1, 24. But any work that the listers do would come out of the FY. Of this list or budget. Right, this list or budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, got it. Do we have any sense about what that would be? You're like, uh, is there a No, because none of us have ever done a total re complete reappraisal. Well, okay, so in the email, remind me, what did you ask for? 
It's um, the total budget is sixteen thousand. So the lister wages are going up from eight thousand <laughs> to twelve. Yeah, I guess my first line was there. I was asking for a little increase of, of wage from twenty to twenty-two fifty. <laughs> right. <laughs> but anyway, it's factored in at the twelve thousand. Right. And the tax map revisions are going up four hundred dollars to thirty-five hundred. Um, no training. You too sit. Oh, you got paper. Um, just we can stay. Software licenses. I have no. By, by the way, can I just say something? I have no clue what the, what the listing software licenses are. Yeah. I mean, I don't know where that is. I don't know where twelve nineteen twenty four came. Yeah. Before, so I just I I'm guessing that it's going to go up. I went to fifteen hundred, but whoever is the person that's a monitoring this software license, it's in their hands. It's not in mine. Right. Well, I mean, all we can do is our best guess. Okay. And then the uh, lister expenses are $1,000. I put it up to that because, just in case there's mailing, um, mm -hmm. you know, we, we don't spend a lot other than, yeah, we don't spend a lot. Either. Okay. Do you see, do you see anything that would be incurred like during this? I just call the appraisal order in that general right. expense category. Since you haven't done this before, so there wouldn't be any, I can't imagine mailings going out. Of course bands. there is. What's with with reappraisal, there's going to be mailings probably two to three times to every single right. property okay. owner. Yeah. And we have to also have printing costs for this big book that comes out at the end. So, I mean, there will be a lot of, and I think those expenses are not included in the agreement. It's the expense, that, those are the expenses, and that's going to come out of, I think, your fiscal 25 budget. Yeah, that'll well, that's be why I'm just asking yeah. here for 24, in that period where you might be doing work, I mean, are you going to have to be doing notifications that are paper to, or things like that? <coughs> cover? I think it'll all be, almost all of this will be in 25. Well, and some of what has to get done is going to come out of the reappraisal contract. Right. Well, I'm just asking, the only reason I'm asking this is because if, if listers are going out and do, actually doing appraisal work in advance, We're not. We're well, not. what are you doing in that advance period? Uh, We're doing our traditional work, what we do every day. Oh, no, 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 I'm asking, I, that's what I'm asking, will there be, you She's know. thinking there, he could, at, towards the end of this coming fiscal year, right. the one we're budgeting for, she's saying, she put in a little extra money, a few extra thousand. No, 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 that's good. So yeah, that's just good. because he might start asking them to do preparatory work. I got it. I was only asking that we it. need it. If, not knowing what that preparatory work is, are you going to have to be doing mailings or things like we, that? We may, and I, that's that, That's why the expenses went up to a thousand. So the thousand is going to cover. Yeah, because before it was a hundred, so it's a thousand now. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's good. All right. Okay. okay. Thanks. I'm just making sure. You want to do PC now? <laughs> okay. All right. This is. Any other questions on the list or work? I mean, I want to make sure everybody. Has I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, planning commission. Yeah. Planning commission. We we discussed this a little bit at our meeting uh, Tuesday, and uh, what lines? Let me give you a kind of a background here. Oh, no, this doesn't have line numbers on it. I did. The email. That's what you're going to walk through, right? Is that email you sent us? Yeah, it's yeah. based on the email I sent. <laughs> It came from Denise. Denise forwarded it. It okay. took me 10 minutes to find it this morning. All right. Come on. Got it? All? Make sure don't talking up the same sheet. Mm -hmm. It's just that we get so many emails from Denise that when we have to go through and. That's fine. I'm, I'm, as long as I hear from everybody that they're up on it. That's it. You sent it when, Denise? The 9th. Oh. Friday the 9th at 3.25 p.m. Oh, okay. Okay, I thought it was this morning. Mm -hmm. This one. Okay. And I said it out at three fifty nine a.m. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, the, uh, the the line items that we have listed in the budget for planning are kind of inconsequential. Uh, we never ever got an assistant, so we never ever had wages. Mm -hmm. Uh, <clears throat> education and training, it, most of the PVR training is free once in a while. Uh, NAMRIC will have a 
a webinar and you know things change with COVID so I, it could be that one of us will want to attend a BCLT meeting or something like that and there might be a charge. Um, I don't know on this budget for where $695.99 is listed as PC expenses. I have no clue what that is. I know that I didn't spend it. <laughs> I know, I, I don't know where that came from. So oh, I have no clue what that is. Um, I, so I'm keeping expenses low because we, we don't really have expenses. Mm -hmm. In our talk though, in our discussion, uh, 2024 is the year where um, we have to update or redo the town plan. And so um, <coughs> we would like to have create a planning commission reserve fund starting out with $5,000 in it this year or for fiscal year 24 and grow it every year at $2,500 after that for the express purpose of getting consultants, of hiring people to help the planning commission develop community forums to know what exactly is it that we want this town to be like in the future. Um, the people that we have on the planning commission, we are not professional, we need help. And I don't know, consultants sometimes cost money. Um, Usually. <laughs> and so there, we decided we would like to have that kind of flexibility to just have a, a fund, a reserve fund with that amount of money um, to go to a variety of different things. Um, included in that could be someone who helps write and format uh, regulations or town plans. Um, mm -hmm. And I understand that in asking for a uh, reserve fund, it has to be warned mm -hmm. and voted on. I understand that. Um, and that's about it. So that's the big change that we are asking for this budget. Right. I mean, I, I can, can, reduce I can some, see. Some folks are reduced, actually. Yeah, I can see where you could really use yeah. some help, and I think it's long overdue. Okay. And um, it makes sense to have a reserve fund because these kind of come up as you have time. I know what the town plans, they sneak up on you, and yeah. you know, there's a lot of work to do. Does the RPC, I mean, they provide a lot of they support. They do. And, and actually, you know, it, this year's Central Vermont Regional Planning has done almost all of the preparatory formatting work for our yeah. regulations. And they don't bill us for that. Yeah. That was Claire Rock being nice to us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's yeah they're really good. wonderful. They and are. so, um, and they will probably do our final. I'm hoping that you know I have to get back on that for this for the um, regulations, but. Um, there was one, oh, one other question that I have in general. Um, if the Planning Commission wanted to do a planning grant, mm -hmm. uh, and there's always matching funds, does all of that grant work come out of a big general grant fund, or would a grant specific to planning come out of a planning line item? We should start, I mean, it would be nice to have a line item because so that we can track it when the grants management piece to track the planning grant separate from the road Moscow road. Woods Bridge Road or okay. separate from the generator grant. It would be nice to have. Then that reserve fund would also be used for matching grant money. It okay. would be another um, positive thing, I guess, to, to, to move to that. And that's enough, you think? I don't know if it's enough. I mean, it's I, a start. It's a start. What, 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 what were you start. suggesting? What was the dollar? Five, 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 five thousand. Five thousand, and five then thousand. a growth of twenty five hundred after that mm -hmm. each year. Yeah, it's a good idea. It's I, a very good idea. Okay. I completely support it. I think. Stability. I think there's going to be a lot of in migration to Vermont. Climate refugees. We can't mm -hmm. stop it. They're going to come. Going to be. And there's yeah. gonna, that's going to have all kinds of impacts, and we're going to have to be pretty sophisticated if we want to maintain the, mm -hmm. the Vermont we love mm -hmm. and not have our fields grow subdivisions. So mm -hmm. I support somebody, that. And somebody to help write, rewrite the town plan, mm -hmm. and can, you know maybe put things together mm -hmm. better and zoning. I, yeah, I think it's really important. Yeah, well, the question is if it's a. <coughs> 
Well, it's the place to start. This is where, too, I mean, we're coming into a new time, and I'm wondering if the Regional Planning Commission is going to be even playing a more important role in keeping towns coordinated even more in, in, in planning and zoning. You know, where it, it, it's going to be an interesting time. I think. It, mm -hmm. That's the role they really, it's one of the roles they serve, but I think that's going to be increasingly important. Do you, so, do you in your talking with CBRPC, do they have, do they know places where we can get a grant? Oh, they, every week they put out something on their weekly thing about various grants. There's better yeah. connections, there's, um, DCHP had a grant offer. I mean, we missed it this year. Mm, yeah. Uh, and, and the four of us that are on planning, uh, we don't have the time to. Yeah, uh, to that's part of the that. problem. Yeah. And, and we're a seat short. Uh, we've never been able to get a fifth seat filled, um, mm. even though we've nominally looked at it. I mean, we could. We, we need to push out more for that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Are we? How are we doing this? Are we? Are we? I think just we taking testimony, or are we reacting and making decisions? Line I, don't by think line? I don't think we're making decisions. Okay. We're just taking right. testimony right now. Well, that's our testimony. Okay, Thank you. great. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Donna, can we ask questions? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so, Jan, what did you have for Lister training? Because I'm afraid that, I just hope that all three Listers now stay <laughs> uh, through the reappraisal. Yeah. Can you guys your idea and swear to God you're going to stay? No, I'm not staying. <laughs> I, 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 this March is my last. I, know. I am training Wilson and John as much as possible, and we're going to put out a crop porch form, um, a thing that there will be a vacancy on the lister, and you have to be voted in, and you are elected. Mm -hmm. Training is important. And did you put a number in for that? What I put away? Did you put a number? A dollar. Yeah. No, because training for the much is pretty free. free. Yeah. Everything goes through PVR, and yeah. the important thing is the listers have PVR. to be self motivated. If you if you go to all of those things that you are training on, you will definitely you and if in the first year, this is what I have to say. I went to almost every single class, especially the data collection class, which is a four day session. Yeah. Um, so if, neither John or Wilson have done that data collection thing, and I keep harping at them. And so whoever is new and it comes in, they have almost swear in a Bible they're going to keep this training. Maybe we could hire you to do the training locally well, with our training money. Two, two things. One, Jan used the term PVR, which is a state, oh. state uh, department under the tax, whatever. Commission uh, under the... It's, it's under ta the it's tax. Division of Tax it's Department. Is, it stands for Property Valuation and, and, and Review. In reporting. Yeah. In reporting? Okay. Reporting. Um, property Valuation and Reporting. The other thing is just to amplify the point you made that there is an opportunity coming in March 2023 to run for Lister. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be other opportunities to run for town offices. That is, you know, loud and clear. People need to hear that. There will be opportunity on select board probably. Two of us are up for re-election. Um, there will be opportunity here. There's always opportunity to point, be appointed to planning commission. So. Thank you all of you for being here. I hope you're all here to consider one of those and then go tell all your friends. And thank yeah, you, and Jan, fact, for your service. And in oh, fact, that's going to be, it, it, right, <coughs> the clerk announces that mid -mo this month, it's like mid-month. All of that's going to go up this coming week in terms of all of the positions. We'll be posting the front porch, all of the different things that are up um, uh -huh. in March, times, dates, all of that stuff. Um, Still need to have a conversation at some point. I don't know if there's been how much of a conversation there's been on town meeting, whether that's it's, going to occur it's in warned, person. It's warned for Monday night. We're going to talk about cool. that so Monday I'll, night. I'll and you're going to be there. Meeting. Yes. Um, yeah. So that will obviously factor in. I'm kind of, last year was challenging because we sort of had two different sets of what's going to happen, yeah. whether it's in person or not, knowing that information will make it much easier for me to not have to have two totally separate mm -hmm. kind of trees of like, this is what yeah. is going to happen. Right. Um, but we do have all of the offices that are up. Um, there's, we've got all kinds of information that's ready to go online and that will get posted to yeah. front porches. And, I, and Barbara did a nice job with the, you know, Calendar. the timeline. The timeline. <clears throat> yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, just one more comment, and this is not for discussion today, but you know, is the town going to think about moving to professional appraisers? Jan's been warning us. Jan will come and talk about that when the time comes. Jan's been warning us yeah, for several know. years, and, I, and I, that was one of the questions I was going to ask. Is well, I think that I will, I will share. I guess I, I don't think I will betray anything. Um, both Wilson and John, we had a Lister meeting yesterday. I doubt that they will re up. Mm -hmm. Uh, which means that I what leave this year. year. John leaves, I think, the next, and then Wilson is. Wilson was just elected last year. I, I don't know which way it is. One of, but anyway, by 2025, if if nobody within the town decides to serve as a lister and mm -hmm. be elected, then yes, this town's going to have to think about uh, getting a professional assessor. Is it, now, is, it, is it appraiser or assessor? The, it's, it's assessor, it's assessor. called. It's the, you know, the Vermont Association of Listers and the Assessors or something like that. So, the, the, we say assessors. Banks have appraisers. <laughs> um, the, where was I going with this? Then we might we need to talk. We will, yeah, we will have to talk the about The other thing again. is, if, if nobody decides to fill this vacancy that I have, mm -hmm. You will have two listers in a vacancy, and I think by law you have to have three listers. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm just going to keep replaying this point, and it actually ties to uh, something you said a few minutes ago, Jan. What kind of town do we want to be? What kind of town do we want to be? What do we want to look like? Personally, our small town Vermont culture, who we want to be and what we want to look like, relies on civic engagement and, and volunteerism. Our towns and our culture rests on volunteer, people volunteering. That is the legacy of small Vermont towns. And so when people think about what they want to look like and who they want to be as a town, volunteering to be part of it is, is um, integral and critical to achieving what we all think we want to be and what we all think we want to look like. And so I sincerely hope that somebody steps forward and says, oh, I never thought about it that way, or that's exactly what I think, and I am going to step up and run for Lister. Can I, can I make a suggestion on this, too? Because your point's really good, and Jan, Jan doesn't control that engagement in the public. But no, we've been the having public this conversation controls the engagement in the with public. With the fire departments, and you know, we're looking for ways to kind of just incentivize people you know, to get out there and do this. Little things that acknowledge, you know, engagement. And I'm wondering, maybe we should be paying more attention to this, because we are having more and more and more trouble getting. Right, but there's a tension between, up. there's a tension between volunteering and civic volunteering and, you know, yeah. all the little stipends. That creates a different uh -huh. bubble. And, yeah. no, I, I hear, I hear your, you hear your point. The other thing is, right now we have, we've said this before, too many people, too few people doing too much work. And so many, men, remember, many hands make light work. Maybe we need that painted on, <laughs> on the wall. Many hands make light work. The more people that get involved, the easier it is to be involved. It's sort of a, it's, well, an, it's an irony there. I don't think of just money and stipends at all. Okay. You know, and I use, I look at like the adamant co-op model that has been very, very successful. They were having real trouble when I remember getting enough volunteers and very few people were carrying all of the work in there. And then they very creatively did that. And I'm not saying we do this as a town exactly the same way, but mm -hmm. you know, to get volunteers engaged, you know, through things like the, the gathering, <coughs> Friday night gatherings. And and then, right. and it was much more it created a community. Mm -hmm. And and somehow I mean, I kind of think of the things Denise used to do with, with you know, annually we're having the the, the, the get together, the volunteer and, dinner, and yeah. that was that was always what we we did that until COVID. We could mm -hmm. we could do that again. Well, and I think there's an opportunity here to do it. You know, probably not in like little isolated pockets, but collectively we've got all these committees and we've got all these organizations, and that maybe that's something we need to do. Just get this a little more public. Get that community out there so people aren't so afraid 
right. to engage. It's actually a pleasant thing. Maybe we need somebody to volunteer to, to coordinate a volunteer appreciation. <laughs> Seriously. So, yeah, I mean, and it's across the state that volunteerism, finding people is really, really hard because everybody's schedules with their kids and school and work. Well, COVID really put a dent. Right, and I think that, that really affected it. But, you know, there well, the is aging a real... process too is really hitting us. But I think you're right. We you have know, to make an effort. Good at people in this room. Everyone yeah. but Jeremy's <laughs> up there. Oh no! Oh, Sa Sage, Sage is on. No, the, Sage is on the there. cusp. I'm getting up there, but I'm like, all right. So, and Jeremy's. Oh to gosh. finish what I was saying. So young. To finish what I was saying, I think we really need to push out something about how important it is for to have volunteers. And I guess I, I might, I'll have to, my brain will have to start the wheels turning, but I did have one other question about listers. What, how many, I mean, is there like an average number of hours per week? Or I was going to ask that. Yeah. That the listers um, work? Okay, I mean, I see your timesheets now. I never did before, but I see them now. And it seems I think to, I always figured 10 hours a week. Whoa. 10 hours. Oh, oh, I mean, 10 hours a month. Sorry. Oh. 10, hours a month. 10 hours a month per oh. person. So that overall, I mean, that's how the wages per one calculated. person. Per one person. Yeah. Yeah. So Times numbers, three. So I put in, I, but it, it varies, you know, like one month that might not be much. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest month is from, you know, biggest work is, is from the time we start inspections to when we cut the first, uh, after, after grievance hearing. So, there's probably going to be more time there. So, but our calculation was about 10 hours a month per person. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And I just have one question. Mm -hmm. uh, just a generic one. <clears throat> I, I don't know that anybody knows where this does. I'm not asking for response now. <clears throat> but it's just like Sharon, uh, uh, Sharon said with PBR. Um, if you want people, if you want to encourage them, you got to talk a little bit about what skills they have to have. Exactly, uh, and that would go in the request, the front porch form that we okay. were doing. No, I'm just saying that's, you right. know, but we do have a lot of facts. It's a good segue to something that I was just thinking about. Um, if you can get a younger person who wants to do a midlife crisis change, <laughs> becoming a professional assessor is actually a doable thing because you, and for that, the state will help pay somebody to do the IAOO, whatever that all stands for, special training to become a professional assessor. And once you become a professional assessor, you've got a known job of being able to go anywhere. So the encouragement I would also stress is for somebody who might be looking for a job change that wants to we become an assessor, in starting out yeah. as a lister, well, that should, that should be is a extremely good. Point. There's plenty of yeah. people looking for a change, and there's that's a really good piece to put out separately. Does it have to be an old? I mean, I, you said older, um, <laughs> or did you? Or no, you said younger actually, but you said midlife. Well, I went is, to midlife because I was thinking of my daughter who just did an adult gap year, you know. I mean, all, yeah, great. all the people who want to shift. But is there any is there any um, reason that a person coming out of college would no. not? No. So that's it's. So it's really anybody. anybody. It's anybody. So it's anybody. It doesn't have to be right. Yeah. Okay. Midlife or old or young. Yeah. John, are you volunteering? No, no. I'm I'm I'm, I'm looking at the. The statute that governs list, the list of position, positions, and yeah, you need to maintain a majority mm -hmm. number, a number so you can have a majority, so three um, minimum. Um, but if, if for whatever reason the town is unable to elect a majority or somebody leaves the list of position, um, we have the ability to appoint what they call an appraiser. And the appraiser would have all the authority, assessor, I'm sorry. Assessor. And they would have the same authorities as a lister, same powers, discharge, the same duties, proceed, and discharge thereof. So I, I don't know if we want to consider maybe having a, just a contingency fund in case we get in a pinch. There may be no one to hire either. Is it, is it higher, <laughs> but, so is it, it's higher 
Denise had this question too. Hire an assessor or appoint a lister that we can do either. You can appoint a, an assessor. But you can't appoint, hire an assessor. But you can't appoint a lister. It, it doesn't appear to offer. Well, well, the section I mean, I'm looking well, at doesn't well, say that. So let's not get into this because it raises a bunch of questions around that process for appointing a public official. And, and until an election can be held and whether this falls But there is an expectation that, as Jan said, that we maintain a minimum of right. three. Right, right. Okay. right. Are we but, ready to move yeah, on? Yeah, let's move on. Yeah. If, okay. okay. Mr. Thank Chair, you. are we ready to move on? DRB? <laughs> okay, so who's next? I want DRB. Sure. Denise, did you send the little note that I sent out to everyone? I don't really have much to say. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. I can, I, can I just pause there? It would be really great if we all, if we get emails directly, the whole board, rather than just to one person. That's oh, just a well, blanket statement. Oh, well, we've got a memo from Denise saying, please look at the budget. Yeah, and okay. To me. I wasn't so aware of that. Okay, all right. Okay. So, you know. um, so Just tell us what, summarize yeah. for us. <laughs> no, I don't have any surprises for you. Okay. Um, I was surprised. I was surprised to find that we had 400 in our budget for secretarial help. We didn't know that, um, and we don't feel that we need it. But what we could use is some legal help. Um, we've had some particularly difficult cases recently, and we could really use the flexibility to consult an attorney when we need mm -hmm. to, without having to find and ask permission. No, exactly. No, actually, I want. We um, have. Mm -hmm. Had probably not in here, but like little, you know, we ought to. Um, Denise and I have anyway. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just the DRB, the Planning Commission. Maybe occasionally, I know I've had this, uh, these emails from um, Jan and others, and I know Denise has years of, of this too. I actually would personally love the idea of allocating each group that might have a legal need, even the Trails Committee, mm -hmm. a little two-hour budget with the lawyers that you don't have to ask anybody's permission. You got two hours, you know, it's, I don't know how that would work, whether they could track that readily so that we would know who's used up their two hours and... Well, should well, the chair should have to authorize it. Yeah. There needs to be some control, some otherwise control. somebody will burn it but, up. Well, no, no, I don't, I don't, no, I don't Not our that. chair, the chair of the committee. Okay, yeah, yeah. thank you. No, not yeah. this chair, good yeah, right. lord. Um, no, I mean, we don't need to micromanage everybody. It's, it's giving each organization, the people who are stepping forward and volunteering, a little bit of autonomy. Yes, somebody should authorize it, but... Well, Madam well, Chair, does, does that go... Where, where should we put that? Should we put that in We've got to have that conversation, but item. point taken. Absolutely point taken, and, and I would say um, Anne's point is applied across other little organizations. We've got to figure out how we'll do it. Okay. I mean, I think... It's, the time has come when things are more complicated and having the flexibility of each group having a, a budget line item for those expenses and then of course you know we'll have to track them and our attorney offices you know they send an invoice and it's mm -hmm. spoke with Denise Wheeler regarding blah 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 so then it would go back to you know having to put in the number it's a tracking, a tracking thing mm -hmm. So, you know, we might have to ask attorneys to bill Sub separately lines. for, so they can bill sub yeah, separately yeah. for yeah. DRB, yeah. select board, planning. So that's something when, you know. Which they can do. Which they can do. So, yeah, yeah I think it's time for Great. line so items. Great, so we're with you. Yeah. So, yeah. well, let's just make, I'm going to make a quick list. DRB, zoning administrator, I know some things came up recently. Listers, yes, no, talk to the attorneys occasionally. What? You need attorney. 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 Would you want a little? Uh, would you little want a little two-hour <coughs> visit to talk to the attorneys? Um, I don't think the listers need the attorney, but well, the planning. Does. The planning would. Okay. Yeah, planning. I mean, you guys I talk have, to. I've got a question now. Okay. I'm just making a quick list while we have. Yeah. Them. And um, yeah. Could, could I ask for more than two hours? Yeah, I mean, so I, think we, I think we have to talk about... Give Ann 2.5. Yeah, I think we have to talk about the complexity of, like, the DRB might, like, need 10 hours. You yeah, know? That, and, which we may or may not use. Right, okay. but I think we have to be realistic on what the time allocation might be for each different group. If we all found this out this year. Yeah, right, yeah. Um, and anything else? No, that's all I need to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.
we're on zoning, um, since I'm married to the zoning administrator, hmm. uh, the, you have a line item for zoning assistant. Yep. And then that was, we don't have an assistant no. anymore. That was back when it was Dot and, uh, and John kind of working well, together, but he doesn't need an assistant. Well, it would be, it would be nice, though, to have an assistant, somebody who are, we're yes. some, right, for somebody who was sort of training to take Right, that was the idea, was yeah. to have somebody in training. So when John gets part, tired part of, of it. Too, part, of, uh, part of that, too, was to assist um, John in doing that to do. uh, the list that we want to show. Where are all the inspections? Yeah. If, you know, Doc yeah. had this wonderful... Hey, hey guys. Um, yeah, can so, we, yeah, let's... let's but yeah. Our, our goal was to have somebody in training. Well, I think that's a good idea. So, yeah. you know, that's another place where, yeah. you know, it's a small stipend, but, you know, it might be good for some working, yeah. working parent who has, you know, or stay-at-home parent that needs, wants a little extra money mm -hmm. and a way to get out of the house. Yeah. Okay. So I think we, we should, yes, I think we would leave that in. Where did Anne, Anne disappear? Yeah, she's done. Thank she's you, Anne. Where are we going? She's behind us. Let's go the fire. That's a real landline, Anne. Oh, I know. That's, that's, awesome. a real, that's a real phone. I know. <laughs> so you need Is Barry, Barry, are you here <coughs> just for fun? No. Are you just here for fun? Because he has nothing better to say. Are you here just for fun? I thought oh, he was here. here. Okay. That is far away. I feel like five are so, so big, I should probably just sit and listen. Just so okay. fill in. I'm not hearing any big cuts. Don, <laughs> no, no. Don, but I know I missed, missed the first I two. promise you there won't be big cuts. No, I, well, I don't really want the taxes to go up, so I just, I never right. want these things to Taxes so might go up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they might. I mean, taxes <laughs> will go up forever and ever into the future. Death and taxes. Death and taxes. Things we can promise you. Okay, okay so. Up. I have the email that I forwarded from Stephanie, Kaplan Conservation Commission. Can we maybe you want to do that after all the other people have Well, gone? let's talk to the people who are yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm just check, yeah, I wanted to just check in. I apologize, everybody, for being late, and I know you may have done some of the stuff. We don't know who's here. Who's here because they want to speak to budget? Judy and Donna, no. Jeremy is. Come on, join us. Apologize. I'm got a stiff back. Uh oh. I'm firewood. Uh, firewood. Stiff okay, back. Get your squats in, Jeremy. Huh? Getting your squats in. I should have been doing a lot more squats before. <laughs> so you just brought two copies. I just brought those copies, and I emailed the board. Here. I'm gonna get both of them. So there should be a fresh email right. from this morning from me. Oh, I must be asking it. Okay, great. Thank you. So she just wants to look over your shoulder too. No. Oh. This is here. Okay. I'm going to move you two together because I got to no, fill it up with an email. Okay. Okay. All right. Are, is any? Have we haven't made any actual changes in the budget? Have we? No. We're no, 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 just talking. Sorry. Putting all my stuff with me. Okay, Jeremy. So my recommendation, um, I've got a couple of odds and ends, and just in terms of like looking at, you know, down at elections. Um, 24 is an even year, so there's not going to be as many elections, which will be really nice. Um, I think the main piece here are the town clerk wages. Um, I have a recommend to go up to full time, and this would be my recommendation to go full time. Um, it's 31 25 an hour salary. Went salary last year, hasn't been working out so great for me. Um, it's been a lot of extra hours that haven't really been accounted for in mm -hmm. my wages. Um, I also think that I um, feel like I've been doing a good job in running the office in a responsible manner. We've had a doozy of a year. Um, I think it's safe to say it's felt like a triage type of situation since I was elected into office in July of last year. Um, so this recommendation, I also have a recommendation for an increasing five more hours for my assistant. What was the number, Jim? 65,000 a year. When you say full time, does that mean 40? 40 hours a week, oh. five days well, a week. But, but you also said salary, so can we just pause on that mm -hmm. point before we switch to the assistant? Um, you, 40 hours a week is what we all hope is a full time job salaried, but a salaried 
professional position, the ones that you know I've had in an employment situation, which the town clerk is. Um, I had a, had a CEO say to me once, well, but I want you 55 hours a week. You know, that just kind of was. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, and I'm like, well, yeah, okay, I, hear, I heard you. I'm not gonna work 55 hours a week if I can help it. Um, but there are times when I do work 55 hours a week. And so I, my expectation in a salaried position is there's ebbs and flows. Um, there's 55 hour weeks and there's weeks where you're like, you just manage to hold it to 30 and, and you have a little mm -hmm. internal party and you go for a hike. Yeah. Um, is that, so I'm saying all that so you can say, yes, that's what I mean. Or you can say, no, I mean 40 hours a week. Uh, well, I think, yeah, it, it's, it would be salary being 2,080 hours a year it would be 2080 yeah 2080 um but there yeah the cyclical nature election year certainly this year has been um a huge amount of hours before and after elections mm -hmm. um we just went through two installments of tax season that was a very heavy lift for my office so yeah there's an ebb and flow um I, so I, guess, do you I just want to clear. Do you think it averages out to 40 a week? Is that what you're looking at? Y yeah, easily. I, I would just like to clarify in light of her question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you're seeing this as not an hourly job. You're seeing this as just a full time job, whatever it's it takes. Right? Okay. Right. Okay. So, right. I think we should stop. If we're talking about a salary position, we really should stop talking about hours. We should well, stop it's just talking a, about is I, it 40, I think it's, is it 28? But I think it's a way for people to understand. Just to estimate it. Right. It's, yeah, where, it's, it it's where the, where the full time came from. And then and your this, thought, right. this is really a 40 hour. And the job. salary increase, it helps to explain that as well, I think. Right. right. But I, when it, well, when we go to salary, if we go to salary. It um, is salary. It is salary. Well, it is salary. Well, it is salary. But if we go to a full time salary, um, it, it does kind of amp up the expectations, I think, um, of, of, you know, townspeople that... So would the office be open five days a week then? Uh, Friday would probably be a day that I actually can do work that I'm not able to do during the like, week. Like Judy did. Judy, Judy would come in on Fridays, as I re recall. She's and right. the yeah, office would close. That was me on Fridays. I was and, that was Donna. Uh, Donna, one of you guys came in on Fridays to do with the office closed to catch up on work. Correct, right. Jeremy. You should see that. You'd be here Fridays. I would be but, here Fridays recording and doing things, but like not doing the phone is right. But Judy and Donna, and I think you do this too, would also accommodate folks on the Absolutely. off days. Yeah, yep. and I still do. So yeah, when people have, yeah, I've had people who come came in and did research on Fridays because that was the only day that they were available. But technically, um, the office is. It wouldn't necessarily be open to the public. Oh, People right. probably could probably walk in and drop a pan in or whatever, but the idea would be to um, pare down the, the customer service and interactions that I'm having and allow me to focus on things that I cannot focus. It's very difficult to do, for instance, recording mm -hmm. um, when the phone's ringing off the hook and things like that because there's just lots of little steps and you kind of you lose track. don't want to screw it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but right. one of the reasons I ask is um, in your proposal that you sent by email for the assistant. You proposed two dollar per hour raise, but it says going to five days a week, so the office would be open five days. I'm confused. No, there. I mean, there's duties that it, it would basically just give some flexibility. So on a day, rather than leaving at two for the four days a week, my assistant would just stay the full day because there's not much work. That's the, that's the cap. I actually think... But this, but, but the assistant position would continue to be paid hourly. What are you looking at for... In, you're saying um, increase to five days a week. How many hours are you thinking that would be? Well, she's 20 right now, which hasn't been the case for months. Mm -hmm. So well, she'll go for 25. Yeah, 20, what is two dollars? What is the current... The, what is the current? I think she's at like 21. Mm, 22.35 maybe? Mm, I don't think I'm just looking for a percent. What yeah, the, I'm yeah. just thinking I'd have, it's on my number. If it's 22.35. 10%, a little less than 10%. 
it's a little less than a 10 percent increase yeah and and i think the reason behind that for me is two things um the assistant has gotten cool as i'm not aware in the last while if, this, if there's been an actual raise for merit and i think that this would be merited i think um the assistant's done an incredible job for our town yeah she's been wonderful um and i think that um you know, to, despite some of our differences and um, some of the communication issues, I think that that aside, um, I think Barbara has really been uh, a glue person in terms of making sure that things move forward, uh, that tax payments have been processed in an extremely timely manner. Um, and just having the uh, institutional memory there has That's been important. very important yeah. for me to be able to operate my office in a, in a good manner, not only just from elections, but just understanding some of the stories around how... Um, something came to be. Yeah, how something <laughs> came to be and just, just knowing a lot of people in town and having resources to be able to try to like get our work done. Yeah. Um, no, I, I agree. She's been incredibly valuable. Question. Um, does the 65, help me out, does the 65, mm -hmm. where does that come from? It's just, is it stepping up your current salary or is it you surveyed other towns and what they're paying their clerks, et cetera? I just That's it's, it's come from. simply what I think in terms of having a, you know, a responsible professional run that office in that manner. Um, I think that that, to me, is what it's worth. To, to have the institutional memory and to... Um, and we're back to town clerk now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah to yeah. carry that work forward, I think that that's, that's what... Mm -hmm. So it wasn't was. just that you took your current salary and, multi and stepped it up to full time. It just, no, it's, it's your sense of what it is. Okay, just wanted to know. <clears throat> um, I, I wanna go back to the clerk, the assistant position. Um, and the increase because I think it's important that we maintain an awareness of differences, of increased differences based on three, three things. One is simple cost of living increase. Uh, the second is a market increase where we realize merit aside, we're simply not paying a person consistent with what this skill level um, and the je ne sais quoi of a person might make somewhere else. And the third thing is this person, this not the job, not the, the job, the person deserves a merit increase. And so you're speaking about merit and asking us to budget a merit increase and, and that's a totally fair request. And, and I say that without making a judgment about whether it's warranted or not. You, you are in a supervisory role and have you know your own reason for asking for a merit increase, but being a, but having an awareness that it's an merit increase, separate from a market adjustment, which means that if this person were to leave, we are not necessarily making the assumption that a new person comes in at that level because this person arrived mm -hmm. here as a merit, yeah. uh, merit number different than we're making a market adjustment where the assumption is baked in that. We would have to pay this much to hire a new person. I, I'm saying and all that and all so we yeah. keep that kind of in our. That's the two dollars an hour. It's merit. Yes. Although it, it's merit. Well, he but says it's merit. I don't know. But well, I think part of this, if we're looking no, at well, salary, we need to break out, if we're is. looking at cola or or um, CPI or whatever we look at, are you asking that in separate from what you're requesting, or is this a total of? that amount Can you understand what I'm saying? Uh, yeah i mean i think depending certainly the salary that i'm asking i would not be looking for a cola increase this year but i think that if there was a cola increase for I'm time employees i think that that the assistant should be eligible for that that in addition to what you're, okay thank you so that would be so if the merit increase is 10 percent and a COLA on top of that, we could be looking at, we haven't actually got COLA numbers yet from no, the feds, No, no, I was right? gonna. Anywhere between no. five and seven is what I've been it's seeing. It's gonna be a lot, yeah. yeah. Some, sometimes we're looking at 8.8. .8. Really? So it's, it could be Have you, pretty significant. So you've checked that out? 
So I just see the chatter on UniNet yeah. and what other clerks and what other boards are doing. Okay. And well, that's it, I've seen anything between 5 and 8.8, which I think that's probably right. the high end, but I don't. So, Social so, Security is 8.7. Right. So, so, so in that I think context, it's... I think I do want to say that a 10% Everyone, everyone here knows that better. There is unfortunately too many of us know that. A 10% yeah. <laughs> merit increase is a lot. And folks who have known me for a while know I would say that without any judgment whatsoever about the person. A 10% merit increase is just a lot. I've never seen an organization budget a 10% merit increase. And I, and I guess I'm here to, to just say that I believe it's merited. I think that what Barbara has provided for the town is invaluable in a lot of ways, and I would defend that. Because I, I, I believe in her and I actually really need her and I think the town needs her right now. It's, it's, it's a critical <laughs> position that's doing a lot for us. Is there anything else that, on here that you that jumps out that you want us to look at? Um, no, I mean, I think, you know, the other piece I would just add is that, you know, also keep in mind that the town clerk's office brings in quite a lot of revenue. I think... Um, you mean licensing? Licensing fees, fees, recording fees. Mm -hmm. It's somewhere between twenty seven and twenty nine thousand dollars a year. Is so it it's not um, twenty you know, what did you say? Twenty seven twenty seven to twenty nine thousand dollars a year. You can look back through the years. Mm -hmm. There's a revenue report that's in all the town reports. Yeah. Um, so it's not an entirely unfunded position. Um, also last year I had asked for ten thousand dollars for vault shelving and map storage. I was able to actually spend a fraction of that um, and get the same um, job done. So I feel like we've done a pretty good job um, kind of holding the line in terms of spending. Um, and it, it's, you know, my hope that, um, you know, the wages can increase so that I can stay in this job, essentially. You know, we talked about also moving. There's some things in the select board budget that we're talking about maybe putting under general general office mm -hmm. um, such as I was just trying to think I had some notes from last time um, um, like like the copier maintenance for instance yeah and yeah maybe, I never understood why that's uh, yeah it doesn't make any sense office. right so that would be something like that and just so you know so you aren't surprised mm -hmm. um, there's a few things like that that we might put under um, the office mm -hmm. I think that there's other things too in terms of, um, you know, I've, I've worked with committees, um, DRB, and, and most recently, but others, um, planning commission in terms of printing costs and things like that. I mean, yeah, and just mailing. I think, um, you know, I, I think the copyright maintenance agreement, uh, it, it's, it's kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other, as long as right. there's money in there somewhere. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I think generally we're going to see things go up yeah. a little bit. Like our postage is not necessarily going to go up because it's not an election year. Right. Well, that was one of the things I was going to ask because I know that the <coughs> cost for mailing like DRV stuff and planning commission stuff, whatever comes out of the town office budget, but we don't track it separately. Right. And a copyright maintenance agreement, I think, is a good, a good example in terms of trying to outsource some of those jobs. I have been reluctant to, for instance, like copy the town plan on our copier because it's mm -hmm. not, we're not a print shop. So I've been right. utilizing capital copy to like make nice bound with a cover and actually have it a little bit more professional and the same thing with just materials for the DRB just to make it a little bit easier and just yeah. reduce the amount of impact on our copier to try to like yeah that makes sense Jan, you have a oh hang on Jeremy's still talking Jeremy see your um, hand we see your hand Jeremy finish it okay so so yeah just trying to like utilize our resources in the best manner possible and um and things, you know, if it's over 20 or 30 pages, just trying to outsource some of those mm -hmm. things. So nice. I think yeah, that's that very makes, smart. Yeah, that smart. Makes sense. I'm it's just time basis. I don't have a you know, I don't want to use Barbara's time or my time to be stapling up, you know, yeah, 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 something that are 50, 60, 70 pages long and, mm -hmm. well, that's and just good. make it a little bit more professional so that if you go to the DRB hearing and you're, you know, looking through the materials, it's just a little bit easier and a little more concise and it's not um, mm -hmm. like a cop, cop, an office copy hat job kind of thing. It's just like a little bit Yeah, like the ones better. I make at the ones I make at home for myself and the stapler isn't 
They're fine. Thick, thick enough to staple the. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you got to get the big fat stapler, or right. you can just you so, know. So yeah. you're saying like the a town plan that's professionally bound, bound so that each DRB member has something that is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And even in the zoning, I put into so do we need little to spiral bound books. It's really not that much. And it's more. for the members. It's and for, that's going to yeah. be. That, I'm mm -hmm. going to interrupt you. Mm -hmm. There, when when these new regulations get passed, hopefully after it gets to select board and gets voted on, mm -hmm. every single DRB member and every, and the zoning administrator and hopefully somebody else are going to need copies of the new regulations. Mm -hmm. And we're we're at probably 95 pages. Right. So, so th that's going to be something that's got to be allotted mm -hmm. for in the copying and. and much so, more prefer it to be professional. So, 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 we have, so, which, so which line item? Right. Are you? Which line item does the all that copying come out of? And I think that's a great question because I actually don't really know. And it's a question that comes up with a lot of committees when they want to come in and make copies, and they're like, "Can we make copies?" And I'm like, "Of course. I don't know where it comes from. It's just, you know." Mm -hmm. So I think. Um, well, I would say probably under general office, there's supplies. There's right. office. Um, I'm guessing that I'm if, guessing if there isn't something, yeah, maybe it's supplies because that's a fairly large budget item. Also, my I have a copier maintenance agreement in my office, and it includes X number of copies and X amount of toner. Yeah, exactly. And then I get a bill. I get one toner at a time. I get <laughs> and I get a bill if I go over. Go over, so that yeah. that Is might that come in under copy maintenance agreement. Is that the way the maintenance agreement is now? Yeah, it's currently, it's based on a certain amount of pages. And like, for instance, if I know that I was going to be making lots of copies, like, yeah, I get one toner at a time. They're very clear about how they yeah. go, go about it. I don't know if that's going up. I'm assuming everything's just going to go up. And oh, okay. Should, so, should so we it's, just it's have a line item first that, it's that somewhere. says gen, outsource general, general Or even services. just capital copy. I mean, we have an account. I've been using them. So. Yeah, they're okay. great. Capital copy account. And they're local and they're well, I don't know they're really great. Why don't I expensive. think we should just say copy? Yeah, not, not identify. Yeah, I don't think we have to not identify a vendor. Capital, but that's who I use. I'm gonna so say it would be outsourced general services because that way because there might be other stuff. Yeah, but like people this. aren't gonna understand what that means. Right? Oh. I, I like copying. I mean, okay. if it becomes something else, then we'll you're too this professional. Way. You know, you're yeah. Because yeah, yeah, I mean, supplies. Because he does this too much. Yeah. So I mean, copying yeah. line, a copying line item. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a question that comes up when committees come in and go, can we do this? And typically I'm saying, I say to them, of course, I don't know where it comes from, but we, you know, like, mm -hmm. but, yeah. um, I, I feel like I have a role to play in terms of supporting those committees mm -hmm. and doing their work. And it's certainly easier when um, you can make booklets with all of the things in there. Right. Yeah. What, what, what should be the copy and budget? Yeah, same question. What is the cost? You know, I would. Thousand dollars. I could get back to you. I mean, I could see what we've spent at capital, but it sounds like whatever sure, it, it is, is, it's going to go up. So yeah, yeah, could, yeah, maybe that. So would I be think a thousand bucks would be a starting point. Thousand. Um, All right, Jeremy will let us know. What's going Jeremy, I have a question. Um, I understand it's going back to the salary number for you for the clerk's position. <laughs> Entirely aside from. You know what works for you. I would think professionally we need to look around at other towns. And my question is, before we do that, is there anything I wanted to let you know? I don't know. I can't speak for the rest of you, but I would do that. Mm -hmm. Is there anything we ought to know from you in terms of something special about what you do that, let's say, the clerks of East Montpelier and Middlesex. Middlesex and Worcester and all these other towns well, don't do. Is there anything we ought to know from you while you're here sitting here with us? That's different. That's different. That I would should. say two things. Yeah. The first thing I would say is our roster. We've got some missing positions in town. Yeah. We've got I a number of missing positions. Yeah, yeah. This has created an enormous amount of pressure on my office like to, treasure, for example. to fill yeah. those needed um, jobs. So that would be number one. And I think number two would just be customer service or just a um, culture of customer service. Um, our town takes care of our people. I don't believe that if you are a townsperson that you should hire, have to hire an attorney to come and research your deed. Um, 
That being said, if you're a Hudson and there's 150 things in there, it takes some time to sort through. We spend a lot of time with people helping mm -hmm. them, whether it's filling out zoning forms or finding their deed or whatever. I think that there's, um, I don't take a lunch. I've tried and I sit at that table. And once I actually leave the office, people will come in and be like, hey, can you know is this for me? I mean, it's, it's just not a part of the culture of our office that we take a lunch break or- Like you don't close at lunchtime. No, yeah. and I think that, um, you know, the, those two factors are important. Um, I think it's important to recognize that we are a very busy town. We have a lot of land recordings, we've got a lot of committees, we've got a lot of grants, we've got a lot of things going on here. Those are some of the things that make our town really great, um, but those are all things that um, require work and energy and effort and posting things on the web and answering questions. Um, so I think, you know, in terms of of that, those would be the two things that I would point to that mm -hmm. make Palace a little bit different. And it's can, really can about our culture. Can you, okay, I was going to ask what, the question I get asked is, you know, why are we different? Why are we full time or three quarters time? Four fifths time about other when other towns time. are half and half. And you and I have talked about this, mm -hmm. and you know, in conversation, you explain maybe you could explain to all of us what your theory at least is why we're different than Worcester, which is right next door, U thirty two district. Middlesex. I mean, Middlesex. Middlesex is is a is a is a you know more population. It, for all, they're slightly bigger than we are, but for practical purposes, we're the same time same size. The town clerk. Is, is also the select board assistant, and that's what makes that job a full-time job. It's closer to Burlington than we are by, what, half an hour? So I would imagine that it's got a fairly, you know, educated, sophisticated, ex you know, set of expectations kind of population. I think I actually once looked at the parcels in Middlesex, and they're comparable to ours. So, yeah, so, I mean, I'm not, yeah, yeah, With all, <laughs> yeah, they're about the same size. Yeah, they're a little, yeah. A little larger. Less, but, you know, in, inconsequentially larger. Yeah. Than You're saying it's culture. Yeah. It, but Cal you, you, your assertion as a Calcifer is that much different than Middlesex yeah. culture. You're saying it's more boring. Well, well, and I don't, I've never, I don't know Middlesex. Yeah. So I can't make that comparison, you know. I, I don't know how many committees they have. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily think. I, there's probably merit and value in looking at what other towns do, but we're callous and we do what we do. We are, it's not the same. Um, I think, you know, even just looking at East Montpelier, um, who I think, you know, population wise is a little bit more. Um, they've got a town wide administrator, they've got a lot of resources and support, and that clerk makes $55,000 a year. So I think it's in terms of like, if it's just culture, um, for whatever reason, this is, you know, callous is, the, the expectations are pretty high. Um, and I think that, you know, it's important to me in terms of like our culture of customer service to, to maintain that and make sure that people come in, feel like they get taken care of and um, feel good about like coming to the office and um, and what's going on. So we would not need an administrator if you were to add these extra hours? No. You're saying that in lieu of? Well, you're, you, you mentioned, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, I'm just trying to understand yeah. so I can explain to people. You mentioned that East Montpelier pays 55, 55 you're asking for 65. Um, they're a larger town, they are 2,500, so they're about 1,900 more. Size, size of the And area. they have an administrator that they're funding at some and cost. And a treasurer and... And a treasurer. Well, we're, that's, we're trying to do that too. The town um, clerk there in East Montpelier has a charter change and the town clerk reports to the administrator. And there's believe. also an assistant town clerk there too. Yep. And, yeah, I mean, they have a, they definitely have a bigger infrastructure government. This right, and they year. also have more, they also have a bigger volume of just businesses just, to help pay taxes. Right. right. That's Yeah, that's kind of the tension. Well, going back to... Uh, uh, the reason I'm doing this is because the exercise that we've been subjected to, um, including, frankly, by your office, is 
comparison with all the neighboring towns of similar size and our select board meetings, whether we're having executive sessions too often or not. So I'm, That's and, and by the way, the people who contact me, always, these are the people who perennially complain about their taxes. So I just want to put that out there, <laughs> no matter what. Um, if if they they came down, they didn't come, they wouldn't have come down enough. But, you know, so I, I'm trying to do a legitimate side by side. And uh, I'm just trying to understand why and how I argue it's different. Well, if we have an administrator, which we don't have, I get that. But, I mean, well, it I seems to me we would put a budget together. He gave us his answer. Yeah. Okay. I think we, just, right. I think we need we'll to have a discussion on. about that. I think, yeah, it's, it's what, what I would ask, but I do think we should move on to other things, is um, if, if the clerk position became full-time, then is it, is it an embracing it's an embracing of the pace. Is it any that the current pace? Is it anything more? You know, might the might the clerk come to select board meetings regularly? Might the clerk be available to offer kind of general support? If if um, if the clerk assistant clerk's position increases, is is because one of the models we've seen in other towns is that the select board support comes from the clerk's office. Mm -hmm. The clerk and the assistant clerk are at every select board meeting. You can read in the minutes, you know, the town clerk, it's the name, but town clerk will research, town clerk will, town clerk will, town clerk will, town assistant town clerk will. Um, so it would be interesting to have that conversation and understand more fully what might it look like if, what, what mm -hmm. could it mean? Well, I guess one thing I would say is I would have the capacity to actually do more of that work. You would have. You would have, okay. Because currently, I, I don't. Yeah. And it's not, it's a four-day week job, and I'm flat out. I don't, I don't have time to really consider, and I don't think I've really been asked to consider a lot of things. I've done a bunch of research, um, and I feel like we do provide general support. Um, whether I would be at every meeting, I don't know. Um, I don't think that that's what this conversation's about. I think it's about looking at the office as a professional space that's, that has a salaried clerk who is full-time uh, or a full-time equivalent um, who has the capacity to actually get the work done in a more timely manner. For instance, it takes a month for me to record a document. I don't have time to do all this stuff. And I'm doing my best. Mm -hmm. um, so I think really this, you know, it's, it's um, you know, in terms of general support, yeah, I think it's fair to say there would be more capacity for general support. Mm -hmm. and, then, right. and, then, and, then, and then what we would have to consider here is how that weighs against um, the idea of a town administrator. If we had a town administrator, then that person would be full time and would take off some of the pressure off. Anyway, these are other, com these are bigger conversations. I was going to say, I, yeah, Mary, do you have a good yeah, comment? I, just, uh, I appreciated sharing your comments about breaking any, anything into the three categories, but. Uh, what, what, what three categories? Well, you said, you know, merit, uh, oh, okay. and, and, and market. Um, and uh, I don't know what Jeremy's current salary is at 40 hours, but uh, 30 hours, but I, I Talk to him. Thirty-two. Outside. Thirty-two. Yeah, it's forty. Is it, is, is, what did you say? It's budgeted at fifty-three for thirty-two. Fifty-three for thirty-two hours. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So. Um, no, that right? that's the actual. It's budgeted at forty-six. Oh, okay. Yeah, fifty-three you're right. is actual. Right. That's right. And that's, okay. That was actual for FY twenty-two, and then FY twenty-three. We changed it because to we had Judy come. She right. worked for however many hours. I'm assuming that's on that same line. So that's okay. So my, my point my, my point is this: you have a couple of categories. You Jeremy's asking you to go to 40 hours, which obviously is a percentage increase. Mm -hmm. um, just having left uh, as president of the the co-op, we for the first time in the Washington Electric Washington Electric Co-op. Co yeah, mm -hmm. for the first time. In the 40 years I've been involved there, we've had 25% uh, change in staffing, uh, driven tremendously by a market that is paying $20 to work at at, uh, at McDonald's 
and we've been hit with a total of over two years, you know, cons considering that what's happening with inflation, close to 20 percent, 15 to 20 percent. So I mean, there's a lot, a lot going on. Increases out. in salaries what? or turnover. No, turnover's been 25%. Our, our salary increases on positions yeah. have been, been off, the, off the board because we're competing with everybody and nobody's got enough people. I, I think, yeah, yeah. point so, taken, Barry. I think what you're saying, and I would tend to agree with yeah, you, is, the is, that it's, is that the 10%, which we might choose to characterize as merit because Barbara's awesome, would be so, could solidly be characterized as market, and then we don't have to get into my concern that nobody ever gets a ten percent merit increase. No, but ten percent market, I have seen that. Yeah, no, and I, and it's just I'm saying I've never seen the kind of changes, the lack exactly. of ability to get people. Yeah, and that's on top have, of that. Yeah. Uh, as you guys yeah. know, I know the pressure yeah. you've all been on. Yeah. It's like. It's hard to find people who are willing to do the jobs today. Period. Yeah, I think. Um, so I'm just. And, and, yeah. That. In terms of the assistant as well, it's just you know right now it's if Barbara were to leave, finding someone who would come in four hours a day or five hours a day, like that's people aren't looking for those right. kinds of jobs. Right. With Barbara's skill set too, she brings you know, a lot of. And, she and, and also, she, there's no health care, and there's not. She doesn't really qualify for any other right. you know any other you know and even just bumping up to 25 hours that's still the personnel policy is 30 hours before any of that stuff kicks right. in so there's right. really it's really just salary there's no other right. real right. benefits other than sick and, and a little bit of vacation, vacation. that's prorated right so yeah. it, you know finding a replacement for barbara right now you know that's it's no i think it's really it's, that would be a real it's, struggle. It's, so it's not you know there's i'm saying merit but it's it, there's it's complicated and it's hard to market factor well and there's also market factor i think there's so much safer call it market be the guy i don't ever want to well, argue about 10 percent merit well it's and it's the value yeah. Well, we could split it. We could split it. We could have a dollar. Let's say it's two dollars, but just we can have that conversation. But, but merit has to be. We have to be. We have to be strong on merit because merit. You have to be able to defend year over year over year over year over year. Market, market goes like this. Yeah. Well, yeah, and it's yeah. tied to the CPI. Just one last comment. I do want to thank all of you for the, the energy. I know there's been a lot going on in town, and I know how much everybody cares and puts it in. I think it's important going on with COVID, et cetera, that we all, as a community, take a deep breath and realize uh, we have a lot more in value common in this community than if we were in Orange, for instance, all of us would have done Orange. Oh, yeah. Orange. So we need to re remember that. But thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Barry. Thanks, Barry. It's really Anything else? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot. Jeremy, thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, hey, Jeremy. Jeremy. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Nice to have you here. See you guys Monday. We'll see you on Monday. Yeah, we're going to get to thank see you, you twice in one week. Well, you can come by the office anytime, too. I do. Feel free. I do. <laughs> Jeremy, I need to get a check with you anyway. I think it was a collective view. Yeah. Yeah. I think you meant a collective view. All of us. Oh, yeah. We know you do. Donna's just here for fun. I'm not here for fun. Yeah, Judy's here because it's quiet and she can crochet. Say, just here to say hi to all of us. Can I ask a quick question? No. Come up here so I can hear you. No questions allowed, Sage. Sorry. Um, are you guys going off of just our last year's yeah. in the book? Okay. Yeah. Oh, they sit down. We sit down. They put the breath. We went out last year with plants. Um, the other thing is, is I am sorry, I missed the list. I guess you've had two Saturday sessions. Is yeah, that's my yeah. Sorry. sorry. Um, have you gone over the fire departments? I felt I feel like two days ago you guys had a meeting with East Montpelier. Yeah. 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 And we had a great meeting with them. Mm -hmm. Great. And are, is that going to be a huge increase? Um, that know. was that was. We haven't even had a chance right. to kind of put 
what we heard Thursday night into this. Into but anything. No, no, absolutely. My, no, my, my walking away, and I reserve the right to say, ooh, I was really wrong about that. My walking away memory is that we were surprised that it wasn't bigger. Okay, oh, great. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. right. Um, and we are looking at some other... sometimes it feels like a very large budget, and I know we love them. It's a of the pie. It is. It's it really big, is. It's an expensive program. So it here's is. the thing. We do pay a lot to East Montpelier, and I just want us to remember, remember Sweet Mulberry. Oh, we do. Oh, we do. We yeah, absolutely yeah. do. Like, they really do show up for us. Yeah, they do. They have EMTs. They have all those things, and I just... We they never, sometimes we it never feels like East Montpelier them. gets so much, and Woodbury is really trying to... It is... Well, they, it's the ambulance here. service. You, we aren't forgetting them at all, don't worry. Right. But they've got like seven EMTs on the Liberty Fire We well, talk that, about that them at East Montpelier. We, right. we, we're sitting at, with the East Montpelier fire crew, and it was the night of that accident on 14, so it was a smaller group. But we even mm -hmm. say yeah. in those meetings, we, we try to, okay. it's not their job to process, but we're processing, okay, so if we do this, you know, what about Woodbury? Right. right. We translate this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. I just want to make no, sure. No, we don't. We just so they propose a budget. I know. We've, we've they're usually it, humble about it. I'm just saying, I, you know, I know this year they're really trying to get, raise money for their new firehouse and stuff. And that's not something can, Alice can take on or anything. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Well, actually, first. Yes, you may. Let's let Denise finish, but then I want to ask a question. We are very committed to making sure that we don't forget Woodbury. Mm -hmm. And we've had meetings with them. There was a committee that was involved in planning for the new building. That kind of fell by the wayside. Um, so we are yeah, very know they're, they're a great busy. group of people. They really, they really are. They've really stepped up their EMT. They're not certified like East Mount Player is right now for paramedic kind of services, but they do have EMTs, they've actually done a great job of recruiting people. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, we enjoyed a couple of years. Yeah. 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 So, no, they're very much on our radar. No, they've got a good, solid crew, and I just want to make sure well, they're we're not looking. Right. And they get to our house right. before East Mount. Right, they, they, yeah, they, get to, they usually get to my yours, house. Yours, possibly yours. They can the other night. If well, you haven't well, seen the tape from the Orca that was family, it's worth looking because we're really trying. Yeah, Orca takes work. a while, so I haven't gotten we're to watch, that. Because we're looking at trying to find ways that we can actually reward and incentivize people mm -hmm. in the communities to uh, participate, yeah. to get membership up. Because that Even is a was huge. the first callous resident to be on the Woodbury So that, So that is exactly where I was going to go. There were two other kids who joined. Yeah, well, so, I wasn't, I wasn't, great. Really, I wasn't done. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Did we met with um, East Montpelier the other night and we talked about ways that we could um, reward, incentivize members of both With knowledge. Members knowledge. of both crews. We talked about doing pictures and putting them in the town report, you know, spec you know, calling out, mm -hmm. making a list of all of the members and how long they've been right. on the fire department, other ways that we might help to because they, they put in, not just when they go to a fire or EMT call, training. The training is grueling. They put in a ton of hours. And the fire departments have requirements for how many hours you put in and how many trainings you go to for them to get a stipend from the fire department. Right. We're looking at a similar opportunity. Nice. Yeah, if they contribute, you know, some right. level and not just... You know, they have to meet a certain level of contribution. Right. But maybe they get some kind of a bonus from us in right. some way. And so that they do water rescue as well, which is yeah. not clear. Well, and we talked about it would be like a, like a bonus because in order to do... One of the things we talked about would have to have, you know, we'd have to go through mm -hmm. like um, a warned item and all this and that. But, um, yeah, there's if there's... Certified and licensed, you know, that makes a difference. And if they're, you know, if they attend all of the, the board, of the board meetings, yeah. yeah. So, so I'm going to interrupt you guys. Okay. What I wanted to ask you, Sage, is building out of what Denise and, um, and Rick are talking about, acknowledging, celebrating, thanking, 
the Callis residents who serve on Woodbury crew or East Montpelier, right. would you be interested in being the, the lead on this little project? Figuring out who they are. Okay. Yeah. Getting getting them into a, a group photo. I can do that. Leland hasn't been attending because he's over in college, so I'm not going right. to include him. But no, sure to if you if you're to service, okay. if you would if you okay. if you could independently get in touch with East Mount players and say you've got a job to do for the town report, and so this is a quick timeline. Yeah. Getting a photo of all of our volunteers in the town report is the first thing we want to do. And then maybe you could stay involved in helping us develop this model where we maybe match the East Montpelier stipend from the town. Yeah, we're, so looking, that, yeah, we're looking to put together some kind of a policy. Okay. So that would be, a, a, I mean, given your passion, you would be the perfect energy. Right. Um, That's a great idea. And your skills. And you have the passion and the skills okay. and the critical thinking to be a lead and, right. and, and manage this project for us and just like say, okay. Yeah, that doesn't sound hard for and me to do. Just for contact the picture of pictures. Um, right. You might have to take two pictures. Yeah, right. that's fine. Chance is great right. too in your work. Too, too. Although I um, absolutely. I mean, he'll be right Or I might be able to get like the two kids pals to come down to East Montpelier. Right, so it would be great. Yeah, it would be nice. And you know, if they could be in like their jacket with their symbol on it, we'd really like to beef up in the town report the appreciation and acknowledgement. Yeah, talk about yeah. 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 yeah, right, right, right. We have to get more out of yeah. when I get home, I will send you the timeline okay. for when everything has to be Yeah, out. I'm sure it's quick. Also, I want to put in out there, I don't know if you all, or maybe I should have asked Jeremy, whoever does the the book, uh, the town plan. I do have the ancient- The town plan or town report? The town report, the book that comes out before town meeting. Okay. Or, yeah. or other, published or print materials that long ago I was a freelance proofreader and I'm good with I knew that. using up all the white space like you don't have anyway uh -huh. just thinking about layout I'm not a I'm not a designer or anything like that but you should uh, yeah, definitely talk with Jeremy and Barbara. Jeremy, Barbara, 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 yeah, Barbara's well, really been the point person. Yeah, yeah, but it goes to somebody to format it right into the town report piece and that person who was doing isn't able to do okay. it anymore. But there's somebody new, but you should Okay, so that would be somebody. Yeah, yeah so contact Barbara and Jeremy. Yeah. That's okay. great. I, I mean, made, way I made, too much time. no gosh no because we gave you a job to do and thank you for right. doing it. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, um, see when you spoke you never thought you were right. a job. No, no, I was I knew actually coming up here, I'm sure. Yeah. This is so important because these are services that yeah. are critical and they can't Yeah, and collapse. so you've met with East Montpelier. Yeah. Will you, you will meet with Woodbury yeah. before yeah. the yeah. um yeah. Yeah. book yeah. it's the ritual town report. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm excited that Calaisians are joining Woodbury. I know well, I, I used to be on Woodbury as a course. Woodbury resident, okay, and right. they were Cal's residents. Right. Peter Bruff is one that comes right. to mind. Yeah, Peter Bruff used to be there, oh, he a, was? Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's a history. You know, All right, so now I lied. There could be a well, history. Well, yeah, we knew uh, that. You know, it would be interesting to have a history of who from Cal. Yeah, so Chance and Paul. The so they, they, Chance and Paul weren't around when I was on fire, no. right? they right. probably didn't know. So I guess it's been a long time. time. Yeah, oh yeah, um, Peter left when I got on, and I got on in 89, so that's how long okay. ago. Do you think he was the solo? Well, no, player? Peter was still on tech thing, but you know, it's the trainings mm -hmm. that are killer. Do you think he that's was the only Dallas guy there? You know, you could talk to him. Peter would know. Yeah, okay. yeah talk to Peter. Okay. Maybe you say you could crowd me and help with your project. Peter Peltz used to be on it. Oh, I know. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank Sage, you guys. Great to see you. Thank Thanks, you, Sage. Sage. Thanks, Sage. Thanks, Sage. Thanks, Sage. Where are we? Okay, so Conservation Commission, we don't have a lot of information other than um, they want to, um, they're going to look into a beaver management plan or workshop. They're also going to. I think so. I'm sorry. Am I interrupting you? You are, but that's all right. Go ahead. I'm used to it. <laughs> um, they want us to go back to 10000 for the conservation fund. Or, no, 8000 for the conservation fund because they used up. She went to the conservation commission. Do we have an email from about that? Yep, I forwarded it to everybody. Yeah. 
Okay, so don't search. Um, I didn't have a chance to put figures in here. You did? But I didn't. Okay, no, that's okay. I just they um, had they had fifty thousand, and Memorial Hall depleted it when they gave twenty five thousand from the conservation fund for Memorial Hall. And then remember last year or the year before, we were giving them eight thousand for the fund, and we cut it to five. So they would like it to go back up to eight. And then they want to do some kind of a. And Stephanie said she's going to check into it more because she, I have no idea how much it costs to do um, an invasive species. I don't know. Survey is not the right word, but study, I guess. Inventory, kind of. Inventory study. Yeah. Do you know when species. you sent that email, Denise? I'm sorry. I just I want to I want to look at the email. Um, it really. I'm just going to say this out loud. It really is easier when we get it from the person because. Um, I forget when I sent it. Might have been it's yesterday. I can't search. Here, do you want to see what she said? Yeah. Um, Why don't you just pass it around here? Yeah. So, anyways, basic. Really, oh, the only name, really the, the only of another one. Okay. Really, the only number she gave us was the eight thousand to put back into the conservation fund. Okay. And so, then maybe add a line item for, um, I gotta find it. Where's the place on the budget? That's where I was going. Okay, so let's yeah, let's just let's just frame her comments in the context of the budget. It's the conservation right. fund. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so if you're looking at the conservation fund on page, <coughs> what is it? Three five of the three sheet that is in the dot in the folder. Well, it all, it, that that's useless. It's um, on page three as I printed it out. Um, well, regardless of where it is. Yeah, so the secretary, according to the secretary, they're hoping that we're going to find somebody that can also do there. So I awesome. guess leaving that 600 in for reporting secretary. Green up, and those things all say the same. Where was the, so, so the conservation fund, fund itself, they want to go back to, to 8,000 8, because they spent a lot on Memorial Hall. Um, I don't know what Conservation Commission E means, do you? Does anybody know what that means? Mm -hmm. Yeah, hang on. Can you scroll down to the, this one here? I don't know oh. what that is. That could be a typo. Yeah, probably. I don't know what that line item is. There's no word that got cut off. It. You what? I removed Are you, it. Yeah. Um, what could it be? Is it? Expenses? Ex maybe that's what it is, expenses. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, Stephanie wanted, when I talked to her on the phone, she wanted to know why Greenup was under conservation, but it just makes sense to put Greenup Bay under conservation commission. It doesn't affect their bottom line any, really. Um, so so really the only number she gave me was the 8,000, the bottom line. Okay. But maybe education, you know, the Oh, I know why they did E because it goes when it goes off the line. It is expenses. You have to wrap it up in here. Where's your wrap? Oh, okay. Thanks. Um, 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 but it seems like maybe the CC education training line item right. could also be used for the in invasive species study because that would, in the end, be training and education. The thing about invasive species is one of the things that we wanted to do, what we hoped that a public works director would really That's double right. down on that and figure out what they needed and what, True. and I, I'm just wondering if that isn't premature until we really get someone to, to, to focus on it. To focus on it. Well, because we also wanted the road crew to be trained. Yeah, I mean, it may be that that's something that can be but done I think by that person, or it may be. The, main, the Conservation Commission might have, be helpful in finding somebody to do it, mm -hmm. because they have connections you know, well, in that world. Well, remember, there's a big report that was done 10 years ago or eight years ago. And it's a question of mapping now, of actually going out and, and doing that. And that's something that a public works director either, I'm not saying we wouldn't need a consultant, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying a public works director ought to be in charge of that, making it happen and deciding it's something that they can do 
or something they need help and how much it would be and what it would be. Well, and I think the concept that when we get a director of public works involving the Conservation Commission, along with the road crew and anybody else in town that wants to be yes. involved, you know, even just residents to do a but whole question of whether training. We should, the question, which I don't know the answer is, should we put a placeholder of like two grand or something like I that in here, which probably yeah. work sort yeah. of to help so that there's something there. We can actually get going on it because you really do have to start with the inventory, you know, identify what you want to track to begin with and then get the inventory out there and then look for the mitigation. You know, what about the fund? How many people? It was five. It, that, what, it was five. Well, it, it was started, eight, and then it went down to five. Five, right? Now they'd like it to go back up to eight. 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 Well, so I think, think that I think that, um, and with this may, I, we're, we're probably premature because we're still in the details. But we're, at some point, we're gonna. We haven't asked ourselves this question: What increase, overall increase for our taxpayers? Are well, we going to be comfortable with? I think we need to do this. Right. Come up with a new bottom yeah. line and then look numbers at and see where we're at. And we might go, oh my God, that's yeah, a lot. I think, we, I think we will go, oh my God. And so yeah, we I have to, too. that question of what do we feel the taxpayers can absorb? No. Will accept. <laughs> well, I think it's both. I mean, I think we have to think that, you know, yeah. times, are, times are tough. Everything is increasing. The cost of everything is going up. It's, well, well no, exactly. I mean, we might be saying the same thing. They may not like it. It's gonna, it's gonna walk the line somewhere between, it's gonna hurt, um, and people aren't gonna like it. But we can't run our government without the right. increase. I think what we do is let, what I agree. What we do is let's just do our best here. Yeah. Not going overboard, like not going to ten. Let's go to eight. Exactly. And then when we look at the bottom line, Denise and I did this last year. We said, wait a minute. Right. Uh, let's go back and quote value engineer this budget right. and just went back to places where we knew we'd been a little generous and we could cut back. Well, and okay, but but we still have to ask. We this year we are going to have to ask ourselves that question. Yes. Because it it might. We we are we are going to have and, it, and other times I've said three right. You guys yeah. have heard me say three percent, three percent, three percent. Yeah. No more. It's not going to be three this year. It's going to have to be something bigger than that. Well, and I think we, we, have, we have also said that we would look at the CPI, which we need to do. And yes. I was going to try to do that before this meeting, and I never had a chance. But back to the line items, can we, so are my I put eight, I put eight in. Okay. Now, okay, can I finish? Yeah. Are we putting in a line item for invasive species? Two. Study of two? Yeah. Okay. And so whether it ends up being the CC doing the yeah, checking out or the DPW. Yeah, and okay. Okay. It's just there. So where do we go from here? Are we... What was the number of invasive species? Two. Two, two, two thousand. Um, I didn't... I wasn't here at your last meeting. Did you guys do the... Where are we on the roads budget? Did we... Are we, <coughs> we, went, we went through that line by line. Okay, great. Um, what we don't have is a grant still. And, and right. I, we don't have a okay, grant. Okay, right. so just thank you. I just wanted yeah. to know. And also, we needed some of the hard... The actual numbers for... From network, I don't know if you've been able to get those yet. When he's on vacation. Oh, okay. And what about Swim Fund? Do we have any numbers from them? I assume they I reached out to everybody. Yep. Um, the 3,500. That yeah, was a, that was our heard. assumption. 30. Yeah, I think it's at the same. 3,500 isn't. Wait. They don't spend a lot. No, we have nothing in Swim Fund. I'm looking at Town Hall. So should we just carry over as a basic mm -hmm. assumption? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Am I assuming correctly that if we approve a railing down to the pond, that would come out of some capital fund? It would not come out of the swim fund? Is no. That That's right. Swim funds for the life programs. Yeah, whatever their needs are. Right. The okay. certification of the right. town. That should be a facility type. Yeah, facility type. And type. that's another thing that the public works director would be in charge of. Right. right. Yeah. Making sure that happens. We I'm sure have Stanford, not unless they're swimming instructors. Under Sheriff's Patrol, look at the contract we recently signed. Didn't we get an email from them saying they were going to ask for an increase? Did we already consider that? We haven't considered that, but we did sign the contract. 
What's the contract year? Well, I don't remember the amount off the top of my head. No, but what's year. the year? It would be with the state this year. It starts to, I mean, July 1 and July June 30. July 1 fiscal year? It's a fiscal year? Yeah. yeah. So, so we signed the contract sometime back in June. Why did it no, we signed, some, uh, we signed the contract in July. not that long ago. Well, of course. Yeah, recently. Recent, it's more recently, but for but for the July, so we we signed it with some retroactive effectiveness. I'd have to go back and look. I can't answer that question. But if it was recent, and if in the calendar and the fiscal, it's a July, it's a state fiscal, so July one to June thirty, and we signed it in October, then it's still effective this past July. I don't know. And are we looking at a, a staffing, I mean a time reduction too because of lack of staffing? They have lack of staffing just like everybody else. Yeah, I thought we were looking at reduced hour. Basically. It's probably in the, the contract is probably in one of the Google folders from one of the meetings. June 23rd, 2022. Yeah. It's a July 1 to June 30. Right, this is from June though. Right, well, they give it to us, it's effective. So, what's the amount? So, it's uh, they raised the rate to 31.25 an hour. Yeah, mileage remains the same at 62.5 cents. View and sign, this is generic. We had it as a consent agenda item, and I think we mocked it up to this is who sheriff. Yeah, right. So, we have the well, line item, they show up, they don't. The line item is four thousand. So, did the amount in the contract go up, John? For how many hours? Um, they didn't give the, the number of hours. That I mean, they don't. They, they don't commit anymore. That's right. They say that the fee is thirty-one point two five, and then you. Then we did the math. I think we did the math and said, okay, if we budgeted four thousand dollars. Look, it's blank. Exactly. We filled it in. So four thousand divided by thirty-one point two five. 128 hours. We might have filled that in. I think we filled it in manually. Okay, so I think how they work is here's our here's our hourly, but we didn't get that until June. So it, how we budget around a contract we don't even get offered until June is beyond me. So, but we budgeted FY23, 4,000, and, and there's 4,000 filled in for FY24. I don't know when we did that. Did we uh, do that in our first meeting? We might have. I don't remember. So we upped it four, but then it's eighty nine hundred instead of eighty five. That doesn't make any. Oh, is there a line at the bottom of the previous page? The whole. Oh, so we. Uh, I'm looking at this whole line. This whole section of police, police patrol. Police patrol that we the upped constable. the constable based on Tammy's suggestion. Mm -hmm. Her plea that night we need to pay more. The health officer stipend is the same, and then we carry the others the same, but the four hundred dollar difference. And so I think the que there's two questions. One is um, certainly let's assume the sheriff's contract is going to go up, and what we assume what they do I think is say here's our hourly. And then they give us, presumably, they serve the hours that we budgeted within well, their yeah. hourly. Well, it looks like they're having it's trouble it's getting the staff. Well, that's the second question: is whether if we, if I think this is fine. I thought we even were if we upped it, we might not get more service. Right, because it's not yeah. available. The question: right. I had thought before we were getting something like seventeen hours a month. That, that four thousand dollars from the thirty-one twenty-five is going to be, we're going to get about ten and a half hours. A it was one hundred twenty-eight hours. I got Bye guys. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Thanks. Yeah. Take care. Yeah. It's, it's right. Enjoy so, a beautiful day. So the assumption is that we're getting ten and a half hours a month now. And what Denise and I were just saying is, even if we say we want more, let's budget for more. We might not get it because we don't. They don't have the they staff. Do not have the, yeah, we don't, they don't have the staff. So right. let's just leave it where it is. I agree. Anybody yeah, want, I'm with any, you. Anybody want lunch? Um, you brought lunch. Sure. Heck yeah. Yeah. Get it out. So I'm making a note that, so what we're doing is saying well, we're finished with this one for now. Thanks, right. Denise. You're welcome. Um, oh, oh. I'm hoping we can find somebody to be the assistant zoning administrator. Some younger, I had talked, don't, don't say younger. Well, someone, someone who's got who some, would be who trained would, and would then serve, serve for a number of years. Yes. Right. I agree with that point. <laughs> um, I mean, I had talked to Tegan Deacon and Brown at uh one -huh. point, yeah. and she was interested in, I think she went to or something one time. I, I just know 
then she decided. And then she, I think she just got busy with her job. And this is what happens with another. Those are sandwiches. And there's chips in there too. Did you? What? Denise, I love that you surprise us every week with something different. Oh. Mm. And I purposely yes, ate a lighter breakfast today because I knew I hope they're not. She always makes extra for me. I hope they're not soggy, and I have one for Wayne too. Right, well, Jeez, thank you. I just didn't have enough for the whole audience. Thank you very much. He's got to go rake. That's right. It's cleanup today. That's right. You gotta go rake. He's got to go rake. What? He's got to go rake something out of the oven. Watching this uh, recording at some point, while while the select board was eating our lunch, we we did have some chat about what we what we might include in the board's report that gets published as part of the town report for the March for the March town meeting. Um, just informal conversation about various things we might like to include and what the shape of that report would look like. Um, and and we ate our lunch, which was pretty to watch. Does any, uh, and I think we might be, hey guys, Denise and Mark, I think we might be finished with our budget work. Are we ready to adjourn? Uh, before you do, Madam Chair, I'd like to yeah. go into executive session for a oh, few minutes. Okay, is there a motion? Personnel um, matters. Under, um, okay, is it? It's which? 1 VSA 313A3, I think. It does not right. require finding for one? personnel. Yeah. Okay, is there a motion to go into executive I think session? John made it, right? I made it. John made so it. I'll second it. Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 What time is it? 12. Thank uh, you. 12. And you're not going to say we.